A friendly welcome to a um, desperate uh, topic. Uh, Sabine Melem uh, visit, visited friends in South America, in Chile, and experienced in a situation that has not been uh, put to media in Europe in that scale. Um, the fight for the uh, the fight of the Chilean people for dignity and justice. Um, she, I, wished, I witnessed the uprising in Santiago de Chile, and I wish you give a warm welcome. Thank you very much. My name is Sabine Mele, and I will talk about Chile. Chile despeto. Chile is awakening has been the slogan of the protests in Chile. To understand what is happening there, we have to take a look at the past. And here we see on the banner of a protester in Santiago, in Plaza Italia, which was renamed by the demonstrators in Plaza de la Dignidad, Place of Dignity, we see the picture of Salvador Allende. And there's written, Venceremos, we will win. In 1970, Salvador Allende was elected as the first socialist president in Chile. Allende and his unity of political parties, the Unidad Popular, planned to reform the country. They want to nationalize the copper industry, which belongs to American companies, nationalize the banks, and do a land reform. The USA sees Allende as a threat and fears the arise of a second Cuba. Then Secretary of State Kissinger says, I don't see why we stand by and watch a country go communist because of the irresponsibility of its own people. The Nixon administration provides the right-wing elite in Chile with a lot of money and help by the CIA. On September 11th, 1973, the military, led by General Augusto Pinochet, launches a coup d'etat against Allende and his Unidad Popular. The military bombs the presidential palace, La Moneda, and Salvador Allende, who refuses to resign as elected president, died in the flames. By the way, I highly recommend everybody to listen or to read the last speech of Allende, which is a great speech and also very poetical. The soccer stadium in Santiago becomes a concentration camp of torture and death. The very beloved singer Victor Jara is murdered there. Thousands of people are killed by the military. Others disappear. The so-called Los Desaparecidos, prisoners whose fates are unknown. According to the concept of the American economist Milton Friedman and with the help of a group of his students, Chilean students, the so-called Chicago Boys, the dictator Augusto Pinochet begins a radical privatization of the country. More or less everything is privatized. And Jaime Gutzmann, the dictator's intellectual right-wing consultant, changes the constitution in a way that the concept of radical neoliberalism is deeply embedded in it. Though Chile is celebrated as an economic miracle, the truth is that very few people get richer and richer, while the middle class gets poorer and become slaves of the banks. In 1988, a referendum finishes the dictatorship of Pinochet and the transition to a democracy takes place. But the neoliberal constitution is not changed and it is in use until today. Today in Chile, everything has been privatized, even the water. This affects the health system, the education system and the pensions. 
Public schools are in bad shape, such as the public health system. People die being on waiting lists for essential surgeries. Others are drowning in debt to try to pay for medical cost. The pension fund, AFP, is privatized and nearly all Chileans are forced to pay into it. Exceptions are the military and the Carabineros de Chile, the police. These organizations have their own much better systems. On October 18, 2019, a group of young high school kids jump over the turnstile in the metro station in Santiago. It is an act of civil disobedience and protest against a fair increase of 30 pesos. But the protest does not limit itself to the fair increase. It spreads quickly to include the entire neoliberal system as the root of Chile's extreme social inequality. The demonstrations begin with the slogan, no son 30 pesos, son 30 años. It is not 30 pesos, it is 30 years. All of a sudden, the whole country seemed to be protesting in the streets with cacerolas, that is beating pots and pans and honking car horns. You have to imagine that as an incredible noise. Santiago was really, really noisy with these cacerolas. Here we see the Plaza de la Dignidad, Place of Dignity, the new name for Plaza Italia. Plaza Italia, or Plaza de la Dignidad, is located in the center of Santiago. And here you see the monument of General Baquedano, which the demonstrators tried to tear down, and they were not capable of that, so they changed it daily. Uh, this photo shows also the slogan of the protesters, Renuncia Piñera, resign Piñera. Piñera, his, whose nickname is Piranha, is the right-wing president of the country. And his eye is falling out here on the banner. And that refers to the brutality of the police who shoots out the eyes of demonstrators. The movement gets bigger and bigger. And uh, Sebastian, the president, Sebastian Piñera, holds a speech in which he declares war against his own people. Estamos en guerra, we are at war. And he sends out the military in the streets. Uh, I, he probably thought this would be a good idea because it worked so well in 1973. And my guess is he thought this would intimidate the Chilean people. Well, the opposite happened. Um, on 25th of October, nearly 2 million people were peacefully demonstrating in the streets of Santiago with the slogan, no tenemos miedo, we have no fear. And a symbol of the protest became the Mapuche flag, which you see here on this picture. The Mapuche flag has this sun in the middle. And the Mapuche are indigenous people who live in the south of Chile and are persecuted by the Chilean government according to anti-terrorist laws. And the conflict is about land and, uh, I mean, who owns the land and who can use the natural resources. Here we see demonstrators, uh, a band playing at the monument of General Baquedano in Santiago. This monument became the epic center of the protests. Um, and there were musical bands playing and this one played songs by Victor Jara. Victor Jara, the one who was the singer who was murdered in the soccer stadium. And his song, El Derecho de Vivir en Paz, The Right to Live in Peace, became one of the hymns of the movement. Here we see a demonstrator, you see, he has the Mapuche flag and wears glasses as protection against the tear gas. And he wears a mask which says, Yo apuevo, I consent. And this refer refers to the demand of the demonstrators for a new constitution. 
because the the new constitution and the creation of a new constitution is a key element for the demonstrators and with the creation of a new constitution they mean a constitution which is free from neoliberal elements many chileans demand a basic change in the system the right for living life in dignity this old man has a sign which says gracias valiente juventud thank you courageous young people at the end of a long working career people have ridiculously low pensions very often around 200,000 250,000 pesos that is something about 200 or 300 euros and you have to know chile has very high life costs so it is not much cheaper than germany i saw the slogan of a demonstrator who said i have more fear of my retirement than i have of the cops as a consequence chile has a high rate of old people who commit suicide because they can't make a living and you see also many old people in the streets who sell little things just forget by very soon the artists joined the protest here we see street art and this shows the very popular singer mon laferte mon laferte is well known in latin america and this picture refers to um, a situation in november 2019 when she won at the latin american grammys an award and she walked bare-breasted on the red carpet and on her naked breast is written in chile torturan violan imatan they torture rape and kill in chile and this um, street art poster is a reference to that the whole protest uh, has been organized through social media such as facebook twitter and instagram there are hashtags on twitter for example like chile despertó chile's awakening or renuncia piñera resign piñera and they are filled with information about the protests the official media in chile such as the tv does not report about the movement if they report at all it surely is in a criminalizing and discriminating way the answer to the protest from president piñera is first his answer was to send out the military in the street which i already told you and then he sends out the police the carabineros de chile the carabineros de chile is a highly militarized police force here you see them using tear gas um the tear gas is very often employed with it's with chemicals and when i was there in november and in february and march it was often mixed with caustic sodium hydroxide that is a stuff um if you get hit by the tear gas your eyes burn like crazy you start coughing sometimes you can't breathe anymore and um your skin gets burned by the way this this picture was taken more or less right in front of my hostel my hostel was located in the so called zona zero the ground the ground zone where nearly daily protests were happening and were still protests are happening and here they are the carabineros de chile nicknamed pacos uh the 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 they are hated 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 by the people i saw situations where there was for example not at a protest but a normal street situation and a police car was driving by and all of a sudden the whole street started screaming 
assassinos, murderers. And so far, more than 40 people died in these protests. More than 460 people have lost one or both eyes. They fire bullets directly at the faces of the demonstrators from a very short distance. Well known in Chile is the case of the then, a year ago, 21-year-old psychology student Gustavo Gatikas, Gatika, whose eyes were shot out in November 2019. His bad luck was that he's tall, and so he was a target for the cops. And he was, when, they, when one cop shot first one and then the other eye out, he was taking pictures. Amnesty International is right now doing a campaign um, asking justice for Gustavo Gatica. Another case which happened recently was um, a 16-year-old kid, a demonstrator, that happened in the beginning of October 2020. And this kid was viol violently pushed by a cop head first, seven meters down, from the Pionono Bridge into the Mapocho River. And uh, he barely survived. Here you see a night scene. You see the, the, green, the green light are laser pointers. The demonstrators try to block the view by using the green, green laser pointers and trying to prevent the cops from firing bullets. At night, the attacks of the police were much more brutal and aggressive. And uh, my guess is they thought that, uh, that the night, the dark night would protect them because the demonstrators always uh, make films, they film police. They film police attacks, they film whenever police is there, you can see people standing with their cell phones and filming that. And so many of the abusers of the, of the state, of the police, are well documented. Um, I think it's interesting to remember that right now in France, President Macron wants to prohibit the filming of police actions during demonstrations. Street art in Santiago. This photo, this, uh, this art uh, refers to the violence of the cops. This is a collage. The, the Pacos come from a photo. The woman um, is taken from, I think it was a French artist, I'm not sure. And this refers also to cases of sexual violence and rape at police centers. Here we see a lady, a neighbor lady, who helps the protesters and provides them with biocarbonate spray for the throat and the eyes. And there was a little line, people were standing in line for getting her help. This picture, street art, shows what the Chileans call estallido social, social explosion in one picture. You see in the left corner, up in the left corner, you see the people who lost their eyes, the bleeding eyes. In the right corner, you see three blindfolded women dancing. These women are from the performance Un Violador and Tu Camino, A Rapist in Your Way. This is a performance by the group Las Tesis from Valparaíso. And they created this performance as, um, as an accuse against sexual violence and the whole patriarchal system. And within a few weeks, it, beca it became a viral hit worldwide. And all over the world, women did and do this performance. 
for instance, in New York, they did it in front of the Harvey Weinstein trial. You see also in the picture, you see the fear of the people. You see a Paco firing, and you see a black dog in the middle. And this black dog is called El Negro Matapacos, the black cop killer. And this was a real street dog who lived in Santiago and accompanied, I think it, it was in 2011, the then happening protest of college kids who were fighting for a better education. And this stray dog was always fighting with them in the front line and attacking the police. And of course, the kids loved him for that and named him El Negro Matapacos, the black cop killer. This dog died in 2017, a natural death, and has become one of the great icons of the Estallido Social. You see pictures of him everywhere, and many Chileans identify with him. A reaction to the repression of the state was the creation of the Primera Linea, the frontliners. And this is street art and shows a frontliner couple. You see the man with a gas mask and Primera Linea is written on his breast. And the, the woman is holding like she is holding a drink, but it's a Molotov cocktail. And the Primera Linea, the frontliners, uh, fight directly against the police and stand in their way and enable the other protesters to make their demonstration. So you have to you have a big peaceful demonstration in Plaza de la Dignidad with live music, with theater, with carnival, and there's a Pikachu, and there's a clown, and there's a crocodile. And from time to time, fogs of tear gas are coming, and there's the Primera Linea fighting against the cops and makes the demonstration happen. They, the other important volunteers are the Brigadas de la Salud that are volunteers from the healthcare sector who provide first aid to the injured demonstrators. The women play a key role in the protest. And I, I personally think this would not be possible without the women. Here we see a young girl and she's obviously very mad. And she is masked with a green bandana. And this green bandana is the symbol for the fight for the right of abortion. Abortion is in most Latin American countries illegal. And the women are fighting for a legal and a, a safe abortion. On the poster is written, El Estado opresor es un macho violador. The repressive state is a macho rapist. And that is a line directly taken from Las Tesis, un violador and tu camino. Here we see a young college girl in her school uniform, and she got badly hit by a bullet. Her blood is dripping down her leg. There is written, a seguir luchando to continue the fight. And um, when I was there in November in Santiago, the Carabineros de Chile made an announcement that they would only use rubber bullets, which of course nobody believed. And I think it was the Universidad de Santiago, they made a research and the result was that the bullets the Carabineros de Chile use are made out 80% of metal and only 20% out of rubber. This picture was taken on Plaza de la Dignidad on a Sunday afternoon in March. And it was a car rally that showed up demanding a new constitution. 
And there were lots of cars with flags and honking, and they were driving around the plaza. And the young lady is dressed in the Mapuche flag. And street art again. This is the classical motif of the Madonna in a very unlikely way. This Madonna is encapuchada. She's masked. And by the way, that was, I think it was in November when the government did forbid it. And um, this Madonna also has a baby in her arm, but this baby is a Paco baby. You see, it wears a little, it wears a Paco uniform. And instead of nursing it, she puts spikes in it. On her left hand is written, a cop, all cops are bastards. On her right arm, you can see the Nego Matapacus, the black cop killer. And uh, yeah, personally, this is one of my favorite street art posters. This young lady, uh, was out in the streets in front of my hostel fighting in the Primera Linea. I took the picture in the yard of the hostel and I had been out before like she was. I took pictures outside when I was badly hit by tear gas and couldn't see anything more, was coughing like crazy and stumbled to the safety of my hostel. My hostel was surrounded by a big metallic fence and I knew that I would be safe there. And she was following me. And in the yard, we both got treated with biocarbonate spray. And after we both got better, uh, we prepared for going out again. And that is when I took the picture. She wears on her right arm a green bandana, the symbol for the fight for the right of abortion. And she is encapuchada and she, wear, she, she holds a rock in her hand. And here he is, El Negro Matapacos, that's how he looked, the black cop killer, one of the biggest icons of the movement and a symbol for freedom and fighting. This is a movement without leadership. This movement organizes itself through social media. So when you go to a demonstration, nobody holds a speech, which I personally found very refreshing. A movement without leadership, but is also hard to deal with for the government because uh, you can corrupt leaders, you can bribe them, you can kill them. But what do you do with a movement which doesn't have any leaders? only icons like a dog. So here he is, El Negro Matapacos. This is my last picture for today. And here you see the stray dogs in Santiago and in the middle, of course, El Negro Matapacos, the black cop killer. The writing says, yo apruebo, I consent, which refers to the referendum about the change to a new constitution. That referendum should have taken place in April 2020, but was postponed because of Corona. On October 25th, in 2020, 78% of the Chilean people voted for a change of the constitution. And nearly the same number voted that this change should be made by elected citizens and not by politicians. This was a great victory. They say Chile was the cradle of neoliberalism and it, will, it, and it will be also its grave. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you to the CC, CCC team for giving me the possibility to talk. Thank you to my friend Yali here who helps me with the technique. And um, Thanks to my husband, who was deeply scared to let me go and to let me travel alone to Chile, <laughs> but let me go. And a big, big, big gracias uh, a Santiago, uh, a Manuel, who walked, walked with me to many demonstrations, despite his bad knee. 
and to Claudia, who is giving everything for teaching me the difficulties and problems of Spanish grammar. Thank you very much, and I hope we have some time for some questions. Well, it seems that um, your talk has stunned the audience. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> which I understand. Um, that so far, it just occurred one question. The name of the dog, but you mentioned it after. So, um, uh, Negro Matapaco yeah. will be remembered. Um, <laughs> what I would find interesting um, is to hear a, a little bit about your you uh, how, how did you come to visit south america you, you didn't go there out of out of reasons that you uh, are a riot terrorist uh, tourist no 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 <laughs> no 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 i i had been to chile before um several times and i had taken their spanish courses i i wanted to study spanish and I wanted to, to see South America. And if you travel in South America, you have to speak Spanish. Without Spanish, I think it's not possible. And I was booked for November 4th for four weeks in Santiago in 2019 when the protest, what they call El Estallido Social, the social explosion began. And I was not sure what to do because I had... I had read enough about the Chilean police to know yeah, that they are capable of everything. So um, my Chilean friends said, don't come. It's, it's way too dangerous. And why, but I was curious. I have to say, I was curious. I wanted to see what was going on. And it was also clear it would be a historical moment. What I didn't do and what, what was probably smart, I didn't bring my good camera. I have a good camera. And I had seen before enough films how the police specially attacked people with cameras because they thought they were journalists. Yeah. And um, so I thought it's too dangerous to show up there with a camera. When I, what I didn't, what, what was not clear to me was, um, that it was really a war zone. When I arrived after an 18 long hour flight from Santiago, in Santiago, um, when the ta taxi drivers heard where I wanted to go, they said immediately, that's in the Zona Zero, we will not bring you. So uh, it took me half an hour to persuade a taxi driver <laughs> to bring me <laughs> to my hostel. You know, that's how it started. And in the hostel, I felt safe, but out being outside was difficult. It was difficult. I, I Several times, police came to me and said, stop taking pictures. And of course, in that moment, I, there's those moments I stopped taking pictures. Um, but yeah, it was always, um, it was difficult. But on the other side, the whole city of Santiago all the walls were sprayed with graffiti and all the walls were telling the story of Chile. And I have never seen such a thing in my life, so much art. I've never seen, it was a little bit like being in a museum, yeah, in a museum of contemporary art. There was so much life and so many artists. It, uh, yeah, so that was the other side. But of course it was, um, it was difficult. And the thing that annoys me a little bit is that I think that they are not, they are oh, very. F Sorry. <laughs> Why is he going away? There are very few good um, documentals about Chile. There are very few. Uh, good articles about Chile. 
for those who have access to the Mediathek of the German-French TV Arte, I highly recommend um, to look in, the, in, the, in that Mediathek. The languages are German and French. And there you find some very good documentals about Chile. So um, we have one question just come in. Um, somebody would be interested in what the current situation or momentum of the demonstrations are. Well, the current situation is that um, one thing is that the movement tries to get out their prisoners. There are many people uh, were arrested. Um, and it's not always very logical who got arrested or not. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the right amount now, but many. We, we, we I think we're talking about about a uh, uh, thousand people, two thousand. I don't know many. And that is one of the demands. The other demand is justice, because uh, the the government so far did not take any responsibility for the action of its police. So these are the demands. In April will be a new referendum, another referendum, and then the Chilean people um, have to vote. The, the They are called con constituents that are the citizens who will write the constitution. So this whole process is going on. It is not over. Yeah, The, the referendum was where 78% voted for a new constitution was a big victory, but this is not the end. There is a very um, small, rich elite who, I th I'm not sure whether they understand the situation in Chile. The ex-health minister um, in the corona crisis, he said, uh, I, did, I didn't have any idea how much poverty is in Chile. And I think that was a very honest sentence. So um, the middle class who is so much indebted, the middle class who, who are slaves of the banks, I think that they are very much through with the system and they want a change. So it's widespread poverty. Mm -hmm. That's the, the driving mm -hmm. momentum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the and it's the middle class, yeah, who is the 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 the, the so-called lumpen, the ghetto, the kids from the ghetto. That are people where nobody cares. But the middle class is uh, the are the people who are who who are who get poorer and poorer. And the interesting thing is that on the streets are the kids from the ghetto. And the middle class together, yeah. Otherwise, you would not have nearly two million people protesting, um, like in October two thousand nineteen, uh, in the streets. How many Chileans are there? <laughs> Ooh, in Santiago, I think it's seven, eight millions, and in uh, the whole country, sixteen millions, maybe sixteen. Yeah. Oh, what I didn't say, but. Uh, um, it's clear the protests are also in other streets, yeah, Valparaíso, Temuco. Um, it's not only Santiago, yeah, also in other in other cities. Um, there's another question from the IRC. Do you feel that the protest could spread in neighboring countries? In other countries? In neighboring countries, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think that the protest in um, Peru, where they um, where they recently um, got rid of their of their um, um, of their president, that that was influenced by by Chile's protests. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, other Latin American countries, yeah. Encouraging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Encouraging and. And I think, and that's also, an, uh, also an, uh, for me, it was an interesting thing to, to see that in 1970, when Salvador Allende and his Unidad Popular, they wanted really another system, a new system, a socialist system, but a free socialist system, not, 
not a, not a Soviet satellite system. And um, this, this uh, it seemed like the dictatorship of Pinochet had erased all this, all these ideas they had. And in this Estallido Social, you see that this, that there's a cultural memory, that this is, everything is there, yeah? And the, the fact that songs like El Derecho de Vivir en Paz or this song, um, El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido, The United People Will Never Be Defeated, which was, which is a song uh, from the times of the Unidad Popular, that they are so po so popular now shows that the cultural memory um, of the the ideas of Allende um, is still there, and it's it is also no coincidence that the only politician I saw at Banners was Salvador Allende, yeah. And all the other politicians also do not go, with, with a very few exceptions, don't go to the demonstrations, and they better do not because the people are mad at them. Yeah, they don't feel represented by them. Yeah, I think that's a very nice closing quote. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.